Welcome, guys, to a special edition of QF. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix, and I'm flying solo with the exception of our good buddy, Isaac, who had a major, well, in my opinion at least, a major scoop that I decided with Sam and Raven that we'd want. We didn't, uh, stuff has already been pre-recorded and uh, set for release over the next couple of weeks, but we wanted to push this forward, so we thought we'd just release this as an extra. And when Isaac had this, when he posted this, I was so pissed because it was late at night, my time, and then Raven knew about it. And uh, <laughs> anyway, well, let me first let me first introduce you. Isaac, how are you, man? I'm doing fine, thank you. How thank are you doing? You. Not too bad. Better now that we can record this. Um, what uh, basically she, Raven had told me uh, after the fact, I said, you knew about this and you didn't tell me. And she goes, eh, I'm a little I'm a little uh, I, I guess all the cock talk and the covid talk has been so mind numbing that uh, I unless I hear he's in a gimp outfit with a rubber ball in his mouth. Uh, <laughs> it's not quite enough. You know what I mean? But I thought it was fantastic. Uh, so please tell me uh, the circumstances behind where you went when this all happened? Well, I went to New Jersey to a place called Chiller Theater. It's a horror convention. They, mm -hmm. they do it twice a year. And mm -hmm. one of the future guests there was Ginger Lynn. Mm -hmm. And like I have a, the uh, Devil's Reject poster. Yeah, I know it's a Rob Zombie movie. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> and um, I wanted to get her on it. So I found her. I had her sign it and all that. And I figured, you know what? She was on the Stern show. I might as well try to pick her brain. Okay. I go, um, when was the last time I go, when's the last time you were on the show? She goes, I was on nine times and they stopped calling me about 20 years ago. She has no idea why. Okay. One sec. I'm just going to explain to people this thing, just for, just give you an idea of the, uh, this, this expo. I, how frequently does this thing go on? Like how often do they have these? Twice a year. Twice a year. Okay. So it's not like something the scrubs get out because I saw a really sad one that said, you know, uh, you know, visit so-and-so from Chico and the man and, you know, like really, really sad G, G level ex celebs. Right. Now this one isn't too bad. Michael Beck from the warriors and rhinestone, I, I believe Gianni Russo, who was uh, Carlo from the Godfather, Tony Dow, and Jerry Mathers were both there. Morgan yeah. Fairchild, Ronnie Cox, who I love. He's just fucking great. Uh, but Kid and Play, Jody Sweeten uh, from uh, Fuller House and Full House, obviously. And it, it says your Uncle Floyd, Sunday only, the guy who had his own local um, New York show, if I'm not mistaken, New York, New Jersey. Yeah. Yes, and it turns out my mom went to high school with Looney Skip Rooney, his sidekick. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So, so, so this is something that you know it's it's like a comic con except it's horror specific, obviously. But uh, that there were there were enough people there that to make it worthwhile, absolutely. What was the ticket price to get in? Um, like thirty or thirty five dollars if you buy in advance, like a few dollars more day of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it well attended? Yes. Oh wow, good, good. Especially in the COVID era, you you never think things like this can still fly based on, you know, what's been going on. So either way you had a, did you have anybody else in there that you were in, you were intending to see, or was you were you strictly uh, making believe a beeline for Ginger? Believe it or not, Ed Gale, the guy who played Howard the Duck. Yes. It was his supposed last uh, convention. I mean, he looked, he has a, a oxygen tank and he's very bad health, but he still came uh, out. So I got him to sign a Japanese program of Howard the Duck and his little fig, one of his little figures. Wow. Oh, that's, 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 that's excellent, actually. I still I saw that when I was a kid. I haven't seen it then. And I thought, this is, well, it's not the worst film I've ever seen. God, there's I've seen private parts. Um, I was going to say so, that. So either way, Ginger Lynn was there. And for those of you who aren't quite familiar, there's a lot of Lynn's. There's Amy Lynn. There's Teresa Lynn. There's now, of course, Ginger Lynn. Now, Ginger Lynn had a, a couple year relationship with Charlie Sheen in the early 90s. And I guess they were sober buddies. This is when they were both helping each other get sober. And um and she speaks very highly of him and vice versa. They're, they almost seem like, uh, I don't know. Um, he, he certainly doesn't have nice things to say about any of his exes and vice versa. But uh, she had been on the show early 90s for sure. Maybe late 90s, 98, 99. I don't remember the last time she was on, but it's definitely been a long time. So you got the chance to meet her and get her autograph, I presume? Yes. Okay. And after this, my one chance to ask her a stern question, and I go, um, um, when was the last time? When was the last time on the Stern show? She goes, "I was on nine times, and they stopped calling me twenty years ago." Mm -hmm. And um, she goes, "What's the show like now?" And I go, "It's nothing but cock and COVID." <laughs> <laughs> 
And she said she doesn't listen. Gee, I wonder okay. why. Yeah. So you, you, that, you, but you mentioned she, you mentioned she rolled her eyes. Yeah, she rolled her eyes. She's like, <laughs> enough of this crap already. Okay, fair enough. So um, I figured I might as well right, go for the good two two, two good questions. Okay. Ginger, I got to ask you two more questions. She goes, sure, what? Is that a wig? And is he straight? Okay. She looks at me. She goes, it's a wig, and he's dabbled. Wow. Now, I want to ask you, when you, when you heard that, I mean, you know how most everybody at QF feels about him, that it's not like it, this isn't this isn't earth shattering in the sense that we all believe this anyway without this. But when right. she did say it, did, did it pass your mind? Did, did it cross your mind that, ah, she, how would she know? Or, you know, or, or did you say, well, well, maybe there is definitely something to it. I was like, aha, verification from a classic guest. Yes. And how would she know? Well, she's a, she used an ex porn star. All those porn stars used knew every other one and they would all talk. And he had nothing but porn stars on the show for ages. She has her fingers near pies where he would be, in a circle of people that, you know, this could very well be 100% true. And I believe it to be true. Right, just to hear admit that, I was like, aha. Did you find it shocking that she didn't even, she'd even skip a beat? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. Why not? Because, you know, it, like everybody else is no comment. I don't know. I passed it on to some ex-staffers and they're like, I wouldn't be surprised. I guess she was kind of hurt that, just, that they just stopped calling her for no reason. And just, she's like, you know what? I don't care. Yeah. Wow. She seems like a free spirit. Well, she's about 60 now. How's she looking? Uh, all <laughs> be, right. Be kind. <laughs> I am. Uh, it looks like she uh, was rode hard and put back wet many, many times. Well, she's had a hell of a life, and she uh, right. she's still trying to make a go of it uh, work-wise. Um, well, thank you so much, man. I, I, I really do uh, appreciate this uh, this little expose. I thought it was fascinating. Thank you. And we hope you guys enjoyed that. So take care, guys. Thank you so much.